Sir Isaac Newton taught us that what goes up must come down, and no one, not even NASA, can skirt the laws of gravity. But scientists and engineers are hard at work at NASA's Langley Research Center to ensure what comes down does so safely. We'll drop in to see how they do it, next on Real World. Ever since the 1960s and America's first trip to the moon, NASA has been using this massive structure known as the gantry to test and refine its spacecrafts. Now, as they prepare to go back to the moon, the gantry is busy again, with engineers working overtime to ensure a soft landing and a safe end to the journey. We're currently using it for Orion testing. Richard Boynton is the lead test engineer for the gantry. Where we're not doing a crash test, but we're actually representing the velocity that the, uh, the vehicle would have coming down, returning to Earth under three parachutes. NASA built the structure more than 40 years ago to help astronauts learn how to land the Apollo lunar module on the moon. They even created a simulated lunar surface to make it as authentic as possible. The area under the gantry was all paved to look like craters on the moon, and uh, most of the testing was done at night, so there was simulated moon lighting that was at a low angle, so it cast very large shadows, and all the astronauts descended on a vehicle that was tethered to a bridge. The bridge could move back and forth, as well as lower the astronauts and they had a number of thrusters that could give them all the realistic motions that they would have when they were landing on the moon. And to simulate the moon's one-sixth gravity, the engineers used physics and math. To simulate the moon's gravity, five-sixths of the weight of the vehicle was supported by the bridge. And basically, if they had any problems like an acceleration down, then the cables would take up the slack and not allow them to crash. The training proved vitally important on the first lunar mission, as Neil Armstrong manually moved the lander away from a giant crater, landing on solid, level ground. Moments later, he took one giant leap for mankind. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Since then, NASA has continued to use the gantry to test spacecrafts and also airplanes. In fact, the work they've done with airplanes has led to new and approved airframes and seats that are safer in the event of a crash. And now that NASA is set to go back to the moon, the gantry is once again a very important component of mission preparation. Current testing simulates Orion landing back here on Earth. We use physics to determine what the velocities would be at different drop heights and that's usually about a 25 foot per second vertical velocity and whatever velocity the winds are carrying us. And it basically is just a simple geometry. We have a right angle triangle and we can control the different components of vertical and horizontal velocity via how long we make the hypotenuse of the triangle. This is a, a scale model of the gantry. For Orion testing, we started off by keeping the vertical velocity at the nominal 25 feet per second. And then we did testing down to a, where we had a 25 vertical and 20 horizontal. And then subsequently, we shortened the cables and we did testing that were more where we had a 25 vertical and a 40 horizontal. And that would represent the winds. This is a video of a swing test. And we have airbags to cushion the landing, and basically we're trying to reduce the Gs to about seven or eight Gs on the vehicle. G-force is basically the pull of gravity on an object. One G is equal to the force of gravity here on Earth. A force of eight Gs would make the astronauts feel as if they were eight times heavier than normal. That extra force makes it hard to move or even breathe. The mock-ups that Richard uses in the testing are designed very specifically to match the Orion spacecraft they represent. Well, this is uh, what we call our half-scale test article. It's about half the size, the diameter, and the height of the uh, Orion. We use it to study the impact, and it's a little simpler to uh, work with. Most of our instrumentation is, is on the inside at the center of gravity. 
We have accelerometers as well as what we call angle rate sensors that measure the angular orientation as we impact. So this is the full-scale Orion test article, and it was used for testing uh, airbag systems. It has the correct center of gravity as the actual Orion vehicle. To match Orion, engineers designed and built the test article with the center of gravity pushed forward 21.6 centimeters. They did this by adding a tube at the top that has nearly 1,500 kilograms of lead. Orion's offset center of gravity plays a major role in ensuring proper tilt to perform a skip entry, kind of like skimming a stone across a lake. Orion will skip off the atmosphere prior to entering it, giving NASA greater control over where the Orion capsule lands when it comes back from the moon. Additionally, the tilt contributes to the control of Orion's thermal protection system to ensure maximum protection for the crew. So as plans continue to fall into place, Richard and the staff at the gantry will remain busy making sure the brave astronauts who go up come back safely. Click on nasa.gov to find out more about what's going on at NASA.